Hello there Scorpios, welcome to your October reading. So it has been a long time. I'm really glad to be able to find the time to catch up with you guys. I hope you guys are doing well and I hope that you know the month of September hasn't been too difficult for you. I feel like a lot of you um, as we round out the month of September, you're in a very good emotional space. I feel like the energy is a lot calmer. And so moving into October, it is really important to ride the wave, whatever it was that you have done differently, that you have implemented, like changes that you have implemented in your life. Try to keep riding that wave as we head into the month of October because I feel like there might be some uh, wrenches in the works that are kind of thrown at you and it's really important that you're flexible and you don't let these things get to you, okay? Um, when I was shuffling out this uh, spread for this month, um, I saw two images. And um, your reading is very similar to Cancer's reading. Because um, I see, like with Cancer's reading, I saw like a child at the beach. With your reading, I see a woman at the beach. Okay, so I, I feel like the energy might be a continuation or might be very similar thematically. And it also might be echoing the same types of themes. Okay, um... So let me just talk to you about the images first. I feel like there are two images, but they're both echoing the same theme. And so the words that came out is unwanted attention, unwanted attention, unwanted, um, you know, like solicitors or, or just people coming at you and you're just like, no, I, I'm not ready or I, I don't really want that. So that's coming in. So the first image that I saw is I see a nice beachy scenery. It's really beautiful. It's really serene. It's not too hot, not too cold. There's wind blowing. So you get a little bit of a sea breeze. And I see this um, this beach and right at the shore, okay, so right where the, the, the water hits the, the, the beach, there's a woman. She's got her water shoes on and she's jogging. Like she's jogging. She enjoys the, the sea breeze. She's just there on her own. She just wants to be left alone and she's jogging. Um, and um, she has her headphones on, right? And then I see her jogging for a really long while. She has stamina. She has, you know, the, the strength to continue on. And then I see this young man. He's like, he, he's wearing like board shorts. He's on a bike. You know, one of those uh, trick bikes that a lot of young men or young um, or teenagers ride. And they do like wheelies and they do, you know, tricks. So he's on one of those, he sees her, and then he's like biking alongside her, trying to get her attention, trying to talk to her. So keep in mind, this woman's got her headphones on, or earphones on, and she's running, she's just minding her own business. He comes in, like literally swoops in, and uh, tries to engage her in conversation. And, you know, she, she knows that he's interested in her. But um, she's like answering some of the questions, but she doesn't stop. She keeps going. She keeps going. And then it, the scene kind of cuts out. So I don't know if he leaves her alone or what, but I feel like he, she keeps going and he's like still biking alongside her. Um, so when I saw this, I was like, you're definitely getting a lot of uh, attention from your environment. Some of it could be un like unwanted attention, you know, getting a lot of suitors, getting a lot of people. Um, wanting to be around you and especially people who are popping out of the woodworks they they scope you from afar and then they kind of beeline it for you and they might interfere with your schedule they might interfere with your time they might interfere with your alone time more than anything because I feel like this woman is not getting the alone time that she needs okay and then the second um, image that I saw is very similar I see this woman in her backyard, um, she's got a yoga mat on the ground and she's like, you know, in the lotus position, trying to meditate, working on her breathing techniques, trying to clear her head. And it seems like it's a, in, it, it, it's like on a Sunday in the morning, she's, you know, got the day to herself, she's in no rush, so she's just meditating. And this butterfly comes by and it's like fluttering near her and she sees it and then she closes her eyes just, you know, so she doesn't get distracted. And then it hovers around her ears, and then her nose, and then her he her head. And she doesn't swat it away. She tries to, like, um, ignore it. You know, she, she tries to, like, it's not doing anything malicious or mean towards her. So she tries to just ignore it. 
and yet it keeps hovering around her her space and you can see her getting distracted okay so those are the two images that I'm seeing in your environment and um, once again you know going with the theme of um, you know unwanted attention I've already mentioned that I just feel like a lot of people will be demanding your attention situations will demand your attention I do see a lot of distractions coming in from family members okay and you guys are kind of like the the pillar of um, stability in your family unit okay you're the one that other people come to for advice you guys give very very good advice you're the one that people come to when they're in a jam and they need you to somehow bail them out of a tough situation like literally bailing them out of jail, bailing them out of a, a crisis, if they are if they have a flat tire instead of calling AAA or their insurance carrier or, you know, a tow truck, they, they call you because you guys are just, uh, they know that you're very dependable and they know you will always be there. So, you know, I feel like some people have no business calling you, but they do because you're kind of um, the person that they trust, okay? So I feel like you do it, you, you want to help, you want to step in, you want to intervene, and you want to alleviate the situation because you understand that whoever's calling you, they might not even be family members, but they might not have, like anybody else, in their world to help them with these things. And so they call you. So in a way, when we're entrusted uh, with responsibilities or when other people really trust us and they can confide in us and they come to us for advice or for help, it can be very flattering, right? It, it can feel like, oh, okay, this person really really puts their trust in me it can feel very flattering it can feel very um, good however if it's a situation where it's it's not about self-help it's not about self-sufficiency it's more about you know having a crutch that this person relies on it can be very detrimental so I, I feel like it's really important for you to kind of draw your boundaries demarcation okay like demarcation comes up um, it's really important for you to focus that time on self-care, self-help, and um, teaching somebody how to do something versus coming to their rescue every single time. So I feel like we need to kind of uh, look at a situation a little bit more objectively and leave our feelings out of it and to figure out, you know, why is this person relying on me for these things, you know? Um, shouldn't they have somebody in their lives that they can ask for help or shouldn't they learn to be self-sufficient call a tow truck call a um, you know and and not a lot of people have the resources to call a tow truck to call like uh, an insurance company to call like um, a mechanic okay not a lot of people have those luxury and and just the the resources and so I feel like on an innate level you understand that you understand that they've fallen on some hard times and they need to get back on their feet so you try to do everything that you can to help a situation but I feel like it's not just something as straightforward and as clear-cut as like getting a flat tire and they're calling you I feel like it's an emotional response it's an emotional crutch it's an emotional way of doing and pattern that they are repeating where they can't really take care of themselves and so they might um, reach out to you to take care of that part of themselves does that make sense so it's really important to understand the difference when someone is in real dire need versus when somebody is just constantly you know have you on speed dial have you uh, through text messages constantly reaching out and trying to get that attention okay I feel like there was a situation in the past okay and every couple of days this person would be coming into the picture and I feel like um, your right now something happened in September and your lack of response has has them very down in the dumps okay I have here the five of cups this is a situation where somebody's not able to bring their best to a situation they, they, they come with a lot of drama, with a lot of issues. They're not self-sufficient emotionally and physically, and they're just like constantly relying on other people. And the game gets old, okay? This whole concept about, you know, woe is me, it gets old. And then people, many people from their, in their lives, in their social circle, have uh, called it quits. They, they just can't handle this codependency. And so I feel like you're dealing with somebody who has driven people away, who has fallen on some hard times, emotional hard times. And I feel like, you know, they're constantly reaching out because, you know, their inner circle 
have seen them for have have seen their their unhealthy behaviors and these patterns, and they're not no longer around with these people, and so they're um, kind of reaching out to you. You might be you know the the last resort, or you might even be sort of like that emotional crutch. Okay, so I feel like you guys are smart enough emotionally. You're very 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 intelligent. And I feel like a lot of the times, out of courtesy, out of just your own sense of like um, moral duty, I feel, you help people. Even though you know that they're prone to this type of behavior, you help them because you care about them. Okay, You don't want to hurt anybody. And I feel like none of this is lost on you. It's like you, you know what they're about and you know it's not right and you know it's not a good behavior and it's not a good pattern to enable. But you do it because you feel like, okay, they, they could need this. They could need this favor from me and it, it doesn't detract so much from me, but it will help them. And so you do it, not because you're a fool, but because you care about people. And I feel like something has happened where you are putting your guard up, okay? They're coming in, this unicorn... Uh, kicking up a cloud of dust, or I'm sorry, this horse, not unicorn. Kicking up a cloud of dust, you know, coming with some type of... You need to be a lot more expressive with your emotional needs, Scorpios. And you need to, you know, kind of let people know whether or not they are infringing upon your space um, or your, your, your energy, okay, whether or not they're really taking from you. Um, so, that's like pretty much the first six cards, okay? What I do sense here is there's a situation. Um, I, I feel like there's like an undertaking that is very, very big, okay? We have here the temperance card. And this is a card about moderation, small steps, one, st one foot in front of the other, and we keep walking, okay? So it's like doing something and... Um, the temperance card is it's about um, holding back a little bit, doing things in a very methodical manner. And so what we're seeing is, you know, the, the angel pouring the, the water from the two cups, right? One cup into the other. It has to be done in a very meticulous manner, in the right time, in the right uh, fashion, so that the, the water doesn't spill out. So there's something that requires a lot of calculation. It re requires a lot of research. It requires a lot of thinking over, mulling over, trying to figure things out, trying to itemize, trying to like get all the, the, the moving parts all lined up into place so that everything moves at the same time. So I feel like there's a, a big undertaking, a big endeavor. Uh, it's linked up here with the High Priestess, and both of these are major arcana cards. And I feel like there's a situation here where you are very, very nervous, you're very trepidatious, you're very like, um, I wonder if it's the right time, I wonder if I should do this today or tomorrow. And I feel like you're trying to um, go with your gut instinct, okay? You guys have like... Um, a really strong sixth sense about there was a situation you you've been thinking over for the past three months, for the past three weeks, even four months, four weeks, whatever it is, and I feel like it was a, a weighty decision. Okay, it, a lot of thoughts were weighing on your mind, and you needed some time to take care of all the other areas of your life before you can choose to walk down this path or choose to go forward with this endeavor. And you've been mulling it over, and I, I'm looking at these bugs, these insects here. It's almost like mothballs, you know, where something is very stale and old, and it hasn't been moved around, and it's collecting dust, and then the, the moths are coming in to eat, like, the, 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 the dust and the, the mites and all of that. So I feel like it's a situation that has been stalled, it hasn't been um, worked at or dealt with, or re a, a, a resolution has not been reached. And so it just lingers it just stagnates and so I feel like the universe is telling you one step at a time make the gesture okay get some air get out of the house um, start moving start moving once you start moving once you take those small steps it doesn't have to be a giant leap you're not jumping over a cliff you know, you're not jumping to the other side of the earthly divide. You're just taking small steps at the at a time, getting your feet wet, learning a new things, 
and I feel that you're going to come to the resolution or you're going to come to the, the realization that this is the right thing to do. It's just a matter of trusting that your intuition, I feel like your intuition is a little bit blocked off because you might be scared and you're not deferring to, you know, the, um, the right set of advice or whatever you're getting from your intuition. And so there's a situation here, it's a huge undertaking and it needs to be done and you know, one step at a time, one small step at a time. And once you start to get the ball rolling in, in, in that direction, you're going to realize that this is the right path, okay? Everything else looks really, really good. A uh, relationship seems to me to be very strong. Uh, healing is highly indicated here and I don't feel like it's healing um, in a way where it's like somebody broke your heart and you want to heal I don't I don't sense that I feel like for many of you there might have been illnesses or like rehabilitation and you're recovering from that okay and then I'm also feeling like a huge undertaking that you're you have been hesitant about and now it's the right time for you to keep things moving okay I do hope the reading is helpful for you guys and it is really nice to uh, reconnect with you guys. Um, for those who have been emailing me, I don't do private readings anymore. I do have a link in the description box for a psychic. She's based out of California. Her name is Bridget. She's phenomenal. If you want a, a reading, you can click on the link and book a reading directly through her. Okay. I will be back next month. I hope you guys enjoy your October 2019 and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.